It says going live. I'm live. Oh gosh. This is so amazing. Okay, now I gotta make sure you can see me. Wow, it's really dark. It's really dark. Anybody home? Let's see. Learning curve. Hey, Raina. Wow. I hope I'm not taking you away from your essay. I hope you'll have, be totally inspired after this practice. We need to send a link. Let's see. New window. I better get out of there. Okay. It's starting to get brighter. Yeah, we can see a little bit. Not too bad. I hope people can find us. Is anybody finding us?
Well, we've got some people here. Say hi if you're here. Hi, you guys. I had to change my, my um, link because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but now I know, sort of. So Austin, you should be able to just say hi in the comments section, if you can find it. We're gonna get started. Hi, Sin. <laughs> it's so weird. I can, I'm glad you found it. I knew you would find it, computer expert. Allie Hoxie, hey Allie. It's so good to see you. Are you in New York? See, Austin, Allie knows how to make comments. Come on. So we're gonna get started in a couple of minutes. Um, do you guys have pillows? If you have two pillows um, and a blanket or a towel, it'd be great. I have a couple of people still trying to find this. They're texting me. Hi, Desi. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you, Desi Oakley. Desi Oakley in the house. You guys, we just had this beautiful rainbow um, outside. Um, and it was just so perfect. It went right into the ocean. Such a sign of hope. It was beautiful. All right. People are still trying to find it. We'll just wait a couple of minutes. But while we're waiting, if you could get a couple of pillows, just regular pillows off your bed, couch pillows, couch, couch cushions will do, and maybe a blanket or a towel. So Sin, I uh, you've been doing some yoga, huh? Sorry, you're probably getting all set up and I'm making you come back to the computer. There's Caroline. Oh, I miss you, Caroline. Did you see Desi's here and Ali Hoxie? Yay. I know. It's keeping me sane too. So just a couple people are still looking for me because I had to change my thing. <laughs> so we'll just wait a couple of minutes. In the meantime, if you're just Jumping on, grab some pillows and um, or cushions from your sofa and a blanket or towel. Yay, we're all practicing yoga together. Bridget was gonna come, I hope Bridget comes. Where are you, Bridget? So you're getting really creative, Cynthia. Sin, Sin says she wrote 9,000 words on Sunday. She's an author. She writes all these amazing mystery novels. So cool. It's a good time for creativity. Let me see who's lost in the wilderness. Okay, so that's Barb. Go to my YouTube channel. Sorry, you guys. It's just a learning curve. So far, I'm not doing very well with the curve. Oh, how do you do it? <laughs> Here you do it. All right. So let's see. Are you guys ready to start? 
Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so I'll get you guys started. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our pillows and we're gonna prop them up like this. We're gonna smooth them out, get all the wrinkles out. Let me fix my camera so you can see it. See my yoga mat. I put them about somewhere like toward the middle or the end of your mat. And then you can take your blanket or your towel and you can make a, just a little bit of a roll and put it right where your neck will go. And then this is all we're gonna do. I'm just gonna go. <sighs> Sink on down. <sighs> can you see me? <laughs> okay. So get all comfy. Move away from the computer and get all comfy. Okay. So we'll just start. And as people make their way here, we'll just have to figure it out. Okay. So legs are propped over these pillows and your head is just relaxed on this blanket or towel. <laughs> My husband is speaking to me, telling me the sun is shining in and it's beautiful, so it's all gonna work out. It's all gonna be beautiful. I was telling um, the earlier people that showed up, we had a beautiful rainbow here about a half an hour ago and everybody was out looking at it. Um, it was just really beautiful, such a sign of hope. And so, so as you are relaxing with your legs propped over your comfy pillows and your head down on your towel or your blanket, just begin to connect with the surface beneath you. Feel that support. Let your hands rest wherever they're comfortable to start. And just notice the places where your body is resting on the floor. Notice the support of the pillows beneath you. And wiggle around, make yourself really comfy. Just let this be so cozy. And so wherever you are, notice the sounds in the distance. See how many different sounds you can perceive. And then draw your awareness into the room. And feel this, listen to the sounds that are closer in. So you might hear the sound of a chime, a bell. You might hear the sound of breathing if you have a pet in the same room with you, snoring perhaps. Maybe the sound of your HVAC system. And then the sound of my voice. And then just begin to connect with your natural breath. Notice the sensation of the air as you inhale through your nostrils. Breathing in. And then feel the breath as it leaves the body. That warm sensation maybe on the upper lip as you exhale. Breathe in again slowly and deeply. It's really connecting with your breath. So I invite you to let your eyes close here or just soften your gaze. And settle in a little more deeply. And as we move through this practice, it'll be a gentle practice, but I just remind you, this pose is pretty yummy. So you can always come back to it or you can even just stay here for the entire practice. 
And so I'm imagining you all just relaxing and resting. This may be in your mind's eye. I see our friends from all over just resting, relaxing, letting the nervous system settle down. And letting the belly soften even more, maybe letting your hands rest on the belly for a bit. Invite in a deeper breath, filling up belly, ribs, and heart space. And then pause at the top of the inhale. And then when you're ready, exhale slowly from the top all the way down to the bottom, your belly will sink in toward your spine. Again, another deep inhalation with a pause. And then exhale to release. And continue with your breath. Sinking in deeper, deeper with every set of inhalations and exhalation. Finding a really deep, relaxing space for yourself. Perhaps it's the first time in a while you felt this relaxed. Just let your breaths continue to move slowly and deeply. Knowing, in doing this, you are creating a space for healing, maybe a space for transformation. And so for this next few minutes, I had an inspiration this morning when I woke up. I thought, wouldn't it be nice during this yoga practice to tell a little bedtime story? <laughs> I don't know. So as you continue to breathe and sink in deeper with every inhale, just relaxing the mind and every exhale, relaxing the body, you can choose to listen or you can even tune me out. But continue with this deep nourishing breath. Once upon a time, in the days of quarantine, there was a yogi named Goldie, Goldie Han. For Goldie, quarantine had been not so bad, for she was a yogi. Her practice had made her strong. She knew how to breathe deeply when things got tough and how to stay flexible when things were challenging and seemed to be changing faster than usual. Like many other Californians, she was also a vegan and an animal activist. She was an actress and she and her husband had made quite a nice life for themselves. Then the virus hit. They huddled together in their Hollywood mansion for the first few weeks until one day after her husband, Kurt Russell, insisted that she watch the computer who wore tennis shoes for the fourth time. Goldie decided it was time to get out of the house and take a walk. Getting out of her PJs for the very first time in many days, she dressed in her favorite Fabletics yoga ensemble, packed her understated faux leather Chanel bag, and headed out the door, blowing a quick kiss to Kurt, who was deeply engrossed in the 70s Disney blockbuster film in which he had the starring role. She needed a break from Kurt. She needed to breathe some newly fresh Los Angeles air. Since the quarantine, the air had never been cleaner. Goldie needed to clear her mind. Continue your breath. And if you've just come in, set yourself up and get really com comfortable on your pillows and your blankets. We're just telling a little bedtime story. Heading east, Goldie lost track of time. Soon she also lost track of location. Checking the GPS app on her iPhone, she realized she had crossed the border into Arizona. 
feeling pretty good. She reached into her purse for a kind bar and munched as she walked, thinking about the state of the world and wondering how all of this would end. As she passed people wearing their masks, she would wave and smile. With her own mask on, she was unrecognizable and she began to be grateful for her anonymity. For the first time in a long while, she felt connected, like she was one with the rest of the world. And before long, Goldie realized she was already in Colorado. And while crossing the Rockies, her purse started to get really heavy. She thought she had packed lightly, just some energy bars, an eco-friendly refillable water bottle, her phone charger, some essential makeup and hair products. A pair of chopsticks in case she found a decent Thai restaurant for carry out and a few gummy bears she had bought at a dispensary back home. You can take the girl out of California. Like Elise in First Wives Club, she discovered she needed to let go of her excess baggage if she were to keep walking. Like the resourceful soldier she played in Private Benjamin, she grabbed her cell phone and left her purse with the rest of her belongings on a log by a beautiful mountain lake and kept on moving eastward. You're doing beautiful. A few more breaths here. Just maybe put your hand on your heart and your belly and really feel the depth of your breath as you continue to relax even more deeply. Continuing with our story, Goldie didn't know where she would end up and for her that had to be okay. One foot after the other, Goldie Hawn just kept walking. After she had crossed the border into Kansas, she was starting to feel like she needed a little bit of a rest. So looking around, she realized, wow, I'm in a, I'm in a deep forest. Spotting a cabin off in the distance, Goldie headed in that direction. When she got to the door of the house, she knocked. No answer. She peeked in the window and didn't see anyone, so she tried the front door knob, and lo and behold, it opened. Goldie noticed that the table was set, and on it were three steaming bowls of mac and cheese. That one's for you, Caroline. Her mouth started watering. She was famished. It had been way longer than the 90 minute eating interval she'd gotten used to since the quarantine had started. Ugh, <clears throat> I'm a vegan, she thought for a second or two. <sighs> With a big sigh and a wary glance, she dug into the biggest bowl. It was cheesy, creamy, and delicious, but it was too hot. So she sampled the medium sized bowl. It was much too cold. Then she tried the smallest bowl, and it was so, well, so just right. So she scarfed it all down, savoring every last bite. After dinner, she was really, really tired. So she made her way into the living room, where she found three comfy-looking chairs sitting in front of a blazing fireplace. She sat in the biggest chair, but it was too hard. The middle-sized chair was, you know, too soft. But the baby-sized chair was just right. So she sat herself down. Maybe, maybe her butt had gotten a little bit bigger during the quarantine because when she tried to get up out of the chair, she couldn't. Taking the chair with her, she waddled to the bedroom where she found three beds. She didn't even bother to try the two larger ones. She hopped right into the baby sized bed chair, chair stuck all on her butt, and she fell fast asleep. Deep in her pasta coma, Goldie was snoring loudly when the bears came back from their walk. After seeing the missing mac and cheese, they followed the clues until they found Goldie sleeping soundly, so comfy in baby bear's bed. Mama bear hushed the others and shooed them out the bedroom door as she gently put the chair from Goldie's, she gently pulled the chair from Goldie's butt and covered her with a soft blanket. Papa bear, found her cell phone and noticed it was dead. So he plugged it into his very own charger. Baby Bear lumbered back to the kitchen to find some more mac and cheese. After it was all over, Goldie ended up 
having stayed with the Bear family for the next 14 days, she apologized for breaking and entering and for helping herself to their dinner. They had so much fun together. They relaxed, they practiced yoga, they played lots of board games, and they watched old reruns of laughing. Baby Bear learned to say, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me. And after the pandemic was over, they remained great friends. Goldie pledged to work harder to help save their polar bear cousins. And of course, they all lived happily ever after. So after that, if you're still with us, gently remove your pillows and just set them aside. And you can slide your blanket or your towel somewhere out of the way and just come down all the way on your mat and find yourself totally settled in. Let your spine settle and relax. And then take your arms way overhead, reach really long, get really long, point your toes, take a big breath in, filling up. And then as you exhale, reach for your legs, bring your knees in toward your chest and your nose towards your knees. Just curl up in a nice little bear ball. <laughs> and as you reach long, take a big inhale, big gulp of breath, fill up. Get really long, point those toes. And then exhale, hug your knees into your chest, bring your nose towards your knees. And one more, inhale, lengthen, 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 get really long. And exhale, hug those knees into your chest. And then take your knees in a circle, going toward the right. I was gonna say when baby, when um, Goldie Hahn made it to Kansas, she was gonna to go to Wichita, the birthplace of Desi Oakley. <laughs> Hi Desi, we love you. But I forgot. Take your knees in the opposite direction. See Sin, you're not the only one who wrote. I'm sure I wasn't as, um, as eloquent as you, my writing. And then find stillness. Take a big breath in. And reach that right leg up, just straighten it out. You might have a little bend in that right knee. Let your left leg reach long. And just take some circles with that right ankle, just gentle circles. Keep your breath nice and slow and long. And then release that right leg long. Take that left leg up to the sky. Take some circles with the left ankle going in both directions. Sophie's over there, my our dog. She just let out a big sigh. And when you're ready, hug your knees in one more time and take them over to one side and just press yourself up and we'll come up to a tabletop. And if you have your towel or even your pillow, you can place it under your knees to be really sweet and gentle with your knees. So we've been through a lot, right? So we wanna take care of ourselves. So let the tops of your feet rest on the mat. Take your hands and spread your fingers nice and wide and come into a tabletop position. So your knees are under your hips, hands are under the shoulders. And we'll take some gentle, gentle cat-cows. So drop your belly, lift your gaze, and inhale. And then as you exhale, round forward, let your chin come to your chest, draw your belly into your spine. And as you inhale, come back into that cow pose. And exhale into that Halloween cat shape. Good. Take a few more, just moving slowly with your breath. If I'm going faster than your breath, just slow it down. Remembering I can't see you, this is your practice.
And as you're ready, just come to stillness. Bring your knees a little bit wider and bring your toes to touch and sink your hips all the way back towards your heels. Walk your hands a little bit farther forward so your elbows are off the mat. And then let your forehead just come down to the mat. And think about breathing into the back of your heart. So the heart has this energetic resonance from the front and the back. So imagine you're breathing into the back part of your heart. Take three deep breaths here. Three deep nourishing breaths. So my idea about telling the story was really to uh, introduce the idea of how we, the stories we tell ourselves and how we can kind of change those stories. And one of the ways that is very powerful and we practice it in yoga and um, other ways is just with the breath. So it's amazing how taking three long, slow, deep breaths, and we took quite a few in the beginning, can really change everything. So just by breathing deeply, we get all those really good hormones, those neurotransmitters, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, all the good stuff just flows into our system. We activate that parasympathetic nervous system. So it's healing, nourishing, and can be transformative. So all the good stuff. And it can help us change those stories that we tell ourselves. We start catastrophizing, being more dramatic than we should. And we're all doing it, right? All right, so come on back up to your tabletop and do the little Sophie shake. So Sophie is our, our uh, chocolate lab, and when she's really happy to see you, she shakes. And then we're just gonna tuck our toes and take a gander back at your right toe back there. And then take your uh, gaze over to your left side, take a little gander to your left, just feeling into that side body. And then press your hands into your fingers, lift your knees off the ground, just ever so slightly, make maybe a couple of inches. Engage the core, engage your shoulders. Just feel your legs, your legs are working. Great. And then as you're ready, just let yourself come slowly into your first downward facing dog, unless you practice yoga again today. So I've been practicing with Heather, Heather Jefferson every morning at 10 o'clock. If you're there, Heather Jefferson Mitchell, Heather Mitchell Jefferson, Heather, <laughs> put your link up there if you're watching Heather. She does a great yoga class in the morning. So just walk out your dog. And breathe. And then find some stillness here, pressing into the thumb and the forefinger, that pointer finger, especially spreading the fingers nice and wide. Just shake your head yes and no. So we can get a, a different perspective upside down, right? Come up on your toes, inhale, and then as you exhale, press your heels down into the floor. Take another big breath in. And as you exhale, look forward, remove any blankets or any impediments to your walking forward and just take a little, a bear walk. Imagine you're one of those bears and come into a forward fold and let your head be heavy. You can keep a little bend in the knees and bring your hands to your elbows and just frame your head. Shake it, yes. Shake it, no, just relieving any tension in the back of the neck there. Ooh, the light just came on. Ah, it's a miracle. Inhale, find your flat back. So bring your hands somewhere below your knees and look forward. See if you can see a rainbow. Draw your shoulders away from your ears. And then as you exhale, just slide your hands on down to the mat again, release again. Maybe your knees are a little bit straighter. You can keep your eyes closed if that feels okay. And then as you're ready, bend your knees, reach up and rise up. Find that length again that we found earlier when we stretched out 
Wiggle your fingers. Maybe look up. And then draw your hands right down to your heart center. Find prayer pose, namaste. And let your eyes close here. This is our first standing position. So let everything settle. And as you settle, just feel your feet on the floor, that sensation of groundedness. Engage your legs and your hips. Draw your belly into your spine. Take your shoulders down away from your ears. Draw those shoulder blades together in the back. And with your hands at heart center and your eyes closed, find something to be grateful for. Another way to change the story is to find some gratitude. Take a nice deep breath in as you breathe in gratitude for this day. Beautiful rainbow. My husband who's fixing the screen so you can actually see my face. <laughs> Didn't quite work. And when you're ready, come back to the front of your mat. Come into a mountain pose, draw your hands down to your side. Open up your heart, take a big breath in. Inhale, reach up and exhale, swan dive forward. Bring your hands forward, come, come into a forward fold again. We'll move a little bit faster. Inhale, lengthen your spine, look just ahead of you. And exhale, take your hands down to the mat and go ahead and step all the way back into a plank pose, engaging those core muscles. We're finding out how strong we really are now. So rock back and forth. Stretch your toes and your feet and your calves. And then again, find stillness. Draw the shoulders down away from the ears. And then if you'd like, you can always place your knees on the mat or you can come forward slightly and then lower all the way down. And from here, just make a pillow with your hands and feel yourself snuggling into the mat. So get yourself really comfy. And let your forehead rest on your hands. And take a big breath. Breathe into your lower back. Breathe into your middle back. And breathe into your upper back. Thinking about that heart space that radiates from front to back and all around. Take another big deep breath, feel your heartbeat, letting you know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling, we're growing inside. Sorry, Mr. Rogers. And as you're ready, take your hands to the outsides of your shoulders, tuck your elbows in towards your body and just come up to your first cobra pose. Looking forward. And then as you exhale, just slowly lower down. Let your forehead come to the mat. And rise up again, Cobra, maybe coming up a little bit higher, maybe not. Whatever you need, compressing the lower back a little bit more, so be gentle. And exhale as you lower down. Take a big breath in. Lift up for this next Cobra pose. And then we're gonna come up super slow. And this time, bring your knees to the mat, bring your uh, legs together, sink your hips back. And you can always take one of your pillows if this just isn't working for you and tuck it in there so you get really nice and cozy. We're gonna come into bear pose. I'm calling it bear pose, I like it. <clears throat> so take your hands back towards your feet and just round your shoulders forward here and open up that upper back. And imagine you're that cute little baby bear cub. And breathe here. And take three breaths here. Filling up and letting go. As you're ready, take your hands to the mat. Come back into that table. We'll tuck our toes. And this time, lift your hips 
Coming into that downward facing dog, releasing tension in the back of the neck, shaking out, Sophie shake. And when you're ready this time, lift your right leg super high, point that toe, and then flex the toe and take some ankle circles here. See if you can get a, a little crack going. None of us have been to uh, the chiropractor or anywhere to have our backs cracked. So see if we can get some, some little uh, noises from our bodies. Releasing. Lift that left leg up, same thing. Flex and point, and circle it around. Ooh, I had a good crack out of that ankle. So there's lots of ways we release tension, right? The breath. Exercise, <sighs> yawning. So when you're ready, come back into that downward facing dog. Begin to look forward. And as you're ready, you might want to bend your knees and hop forward. I, I know some of you do. <laughs> but if you're ready and you just want to walk forward, come to the front of your mat. No judgment here. No judgment. Nobody can see you. Find that forward fold again. And bring your belly all the way down to your legs this time. Just let it hang there. Take a big breath in. And then exhale out. Let that tension release. And then just peel yourself up. Rising up, reaching up. This time, take a hold of your left wrist with your right hand. And take a side bend over to the right. Looking left. See if you can see... Out a window, perhaps the sun is setting. If you're in a different time zone, maybe not. Desi, where are you? You're in Oklahoma, right? So it's a little bit earlier. Come back up to center and stretch over to the left. Take a full breath here, stretching out that side body. And then inhale, reach up. Take your hands back behind your back. Find a clasp whatever you can get a hold of, your hands, your wrists, your elbows, maybe reverse namaste. And then gently come forward, coming through that flat back and coming all the way into that forward fold, finding your forward fold, getting that blood flow to the brain, head below heart. Inhale. And exhale. As you're ready, slowly release your hands. Take your peace fingers and loop them around your big toes. And bend your knees as much as you need to. Draw your elbows out to the sides. And again, let your head come below your heart. Take a nice big breath here. Sigh it out. One more. Maybe straightening the legs a little bit more, getting that stretch in the hamstrings. Good. And then as you're ready, we're just going to release those toes. Inhale, rise up, reach up, look up. And exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Namaste, prayer hands. Come to mountain pose again. Keep those thumbs pressed into the sternum. And feel your breath. Feel your heartbeat. And another way of changing the story when we are catastrophizing or getting dramatic or is to pray for someone. So think of someone who could use your prayers, your good thoughts. And from your energized heart, front and back and side, every which way, just send it, send it out there. Take a nice big breath in, exhale it out. And blink open your eyes, take your hands down, come into mountain pose. Do a Sophie shake. And then as you're ready, take your arms up, bring your weight into your left leg, bring that right knee up, about that waist high. Flex that foot, and just notice how this feels. This could be where you stay, it's fine. You might feel a little wobbliness in that ankle. It's cool. And as you're ready, if you're ready, you can reach down and take that 
foot, place it somewhere on your leg. You can place it down at your ankle or above your knee. And press that foot into the groin and the groin into the foot. Try to have equal pressure. Hands in prayer or send them up, reaching up. Make that big rainbow I just saw. Finding something to look at that is ever never changing. That inner gaze. It's helpful to have something that doesn't change. Slowly release your hands, release your foot to the ground, do the soapy shake. And then we'll do the same thing on the left. So bring your weight into your right leg. Come up to that left toe. Lift your arms up to the sky and just bring that knee up to your waist. Flex your foot. Get really tall. Nice big breath in. And as you're ready, just slowest you can go. Strong as Goldie Hawn. Bring your hands to your heart center. Press your foot into your leg, your leg into your foot. It's always good to have a wall nearby. If you're ready to grow your branches, if this isn't enough and you're on a flat surface, I'm not, you might want to look up. Find that drishti, find that gazing point, something that is not moving, something you can depend on. One more breath in, and then slowly release your hands back through heart center and lower your leg to the floor, good job. All right, a little more, a little more stretchy stuff and then we're gonna come down. I promise we're just gonna get into some juicy, yummy, um, really relaxing poses. So come to the top of your mat, let's flow. Inhale, rise up, reach up, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to that halfway lift. And exhale, plant your palms, step on back, find your plank. Inhale, come forward, bend your elbows. I'm imagining Austin, he does the best push-ups. So if you're still with me, Austin, quit showing off. <laughs> Press your hands into the floor, lift your knees, maybe come into upward facing dog. Exhale, it's downward facing dog. Good job. Inhale that right leg up to the sky. Look forward and send that right foot all the way to the front of your mat. Inhale, rise, crescent lunge. Get this big runner stretch. I hope Betsy made it. I'm sorry, Betsy, I gave you guys the wrong link. She's my, my running buddy. Inhale, stretch that left heel back, sink into that right knee, right knee over the ankle. Nice big breath in, and then as you exhale, spin that back foot, come into warrior two, looking out over that, those right fingers, sinking into that right knee, pressing into the left side of that left foot. Inhale, straighten the leg, reach up and look up, let your palms touch, and then exhale, sink back in, recommit. Inhale, lift up again, and exhale, recommit. Take your right elbow down to your right thigh and lift your left arm over for side angle pose. Get a nice stretch in that left side body. Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. Inhale and exhale. Come back up through warrior two and take a reverse. Taking that right arm up, left arm down. Keep sinking into that right knee, right leg. Inhale, and then exhale, take your flow, take your hands down to the mat, step back, coming into plank, bringing yourself just slightly forward, shoulders over hands, lower down, just halfway, and then rise up to your upward facing dog. Take a big breath in and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale that left leg way up to the sky. And exhale, step it forward. Find your crescent lunge. Reach those fingertips up to the sky. Shine your heart. 
Open that heart. Take a, a circle of your shoulders. <clears throat> Reach up again. Press that right heel back. Line up that left knee with that left ankle. Take a big breath in and exhale to open up. Warrior two, there I am. Yay, I get to see your faces, I wish. Inhale and exhale, sinking in, lining up that left knee over that left ankle, you know. Nice big breath in. And then take that side angle, reach up and over your head. So sometimes things don't go in order and we never know what's gonna happen, right? So inhale, reach up, a little bit different this time. Exhale, sink in. Inhale, reach up, look up. And exhale, sink on down, warrior two. One more, inhale, reach up and look up. And then exhale, warrior two again. Take that reverse. And then look down at your feet. Take your hands down, frame your left foot. Step on back, find plank pose. Nice big breath in. Come forward and take your slow descent all the way to the ground. Let your forehead come to the ground and let your arms just rest down by your side. Feel your breath. Feel your heartbeat. And notice if you've been telling yourself any kind of story. I've had so many people tell me I can't do yoga because I'm not flexible enough. <laughs> Hello, that's why we practice. Everybody is different. Each of us responds in different ways to yoga, to life. We have to watch the stories we tell ourselves, right? All right, so forehead on the floor. Bring your arms down by your sides. And bring your legs together so you have like, you're making contact wherever you can. Take a nice big breath in and just lift your head and shoulders. And as though you're flying, just lift your head and shoulders, leaving your feet on the floor. And notice it's a little, it's a little challenging here. So notice what happens to your breath. Does it get choppy? Yeah, you're human. So see if you can control one thing that you can control, which is your breath. Maybe lift a little bit higher and then slowly lower down. Make a pillow with your hands. Turn your head in one direction. Sophie shake, rock it out. Good. I have to see if my, my Mindful Monday people, Nancy, did you make it? I hope you made it. Barb made it, yay. Oh, I know I'll have to do better with my links. When you're ready, we're gonna come back. So bring your forehead to the center of the mat. Bring your arms back down to your sides. Tuck your feet, let your, your sides of your feet and your legs touch wherever they can. And then as you're ready, lift your shoulders, fly, lift your feet, lift your legs, coming up. Slight compression in the back, so be gentle. And see if you can soften your face, maybe even smile. Take another breath even if you're shaking, and then slowly lower down. Ha, ah, let it go. Give a big sigh, it feels good. And then make a pillow with your hands, turn your hand, head in the opposite direction. Take a nice big breath into that lower back. And exhale it out. And as you're ready, we're going to come up to our elbows and just come up through Sphinx Pose. So um, 
I wish Sophie, Sophie's always here while I'm practicing yoga, but she's not today. So let your elbows and your arms rest underneath your shoulders. And breathe into that heart space. Draw your shoulders back and down, gazing forward. A little bit more of a compression on that lower back. If you're ready for more and you want to take it a little bit deeper, come into seal pose. Extend your arms straight. Perfectly good to stay where you were. So exercise, another way to change the story. I know some of you guys, Betsy, if you're here, I can't see if you're here. A good run. Changes everything, right? Changes the story. So when you're ready, we're going to come up super slow. We're just going to come through table. Take those knees underneath the hips. Sophie, shake it out. And then take three cat cows just to release that back. Moving with your breath through cat pose and cow pose. Good. And then coming to stillness, just bring your, your glutes down to the floor. And Reach for your pillows and step them back up. And we're going to take our right hip right at the, the base of these pillows. And then bring your hands to frame the pillows. And it looks so comfy. These are really comfy pillows. They're not mine. I'm going to have to start using them. When you're ready, Take a little twist from your waist. Feel this sensation of twisting. So we're wringing out. We're doing all kinds of good things for the body when we take these twists. But if you have any pain, back off. Sensation is good. So as you're ready, slowly lower down. Come down and just give yourself a little snuggle fest. So you can turn your head to the same side as your knees. Or you can take it to the opposite side. So that'll be a deeper stretch. But I'll stay here so I can talk to you. And take those deep, nourishing breaths, filling up. And letting go. Few more breaths in. And a few more breaths out. Letting your eyes closed, close. <laughs> Anybody remember those Kurt Russell movies? No, probably not. They were the best, they were Disney movies. Take one more breath in. Make it a really deep breath. Fill up completely. Pause at the top of that inhale and then press yourself up and take your legs to either side of your pillows. So you can, you can come out nice and wide. We're going to take a forward fold, wide, wider leg forward fold, or you can keep them in a little bit closer, whatever feels right for you. And then take your pillows and punch them. That might feel really good or scrunch some, or just come, come down and find a comfy place to land on these pillows. Hmm, just let yourself sink in. And slowly releasing that lower back, sending the breath there. Full breath. So the heart chakra is like these cones that come out from the front and the back, but the lungs are also in the front and the back, the lobes of the lungs. So imagine you're just breathing fully into every little nook and cranny of your lungs. So good. 
So good for you. And obviously I'm not a doctor or I wouldn't be <laughs> so useless during this time. But I have been listening to Dr. Radio on Sirius XM. And one of the things they say that if you do come down with COVID, it's good to change your position a lot. So knowing a few yoga moves is good for that. You take one more big breath in. And exhale it out, press yourself up. And then we're gonna take ourselves our left tip to those pillows. I'll turn this way so I can face you. So take your legs and your hip to the base of these pillows and then turn your waist toward the pillows and then sink yourself down. And if you didn't turn your head the opposite way this time, just see what happens. Maybe your neck is a little more ready for it this time. Then you can give it a stretch. And you'd be surprised how, with a little bit of breath and a little bit of focused attention, you can get a little more mobility out of that neck. So just be gentle and kind. Sinking in, letting go. One more nice big breath. Fill up completely all the way to the tops of the lungs. And if you're a Thomas's English muffin, imagine that breath is filling up every little nook and cranny like the butter. I'm sorry, I'm talking about food. Oh. And as you exhale, slowly come up, rise up, and leave your pillows right where they are. And here we go. My mother's calling me. Hi, Mom. Sorry, I'll call you back. Take your um, hips to the base of the pillows and just lower yourself down. And hopefully this feels really good. Hopefully your head lands on the pillows and hopefully your pillows are as soft as mine. And then take your arms out and give yourself a really nice heart opener here. So you'll feel that little bit of a back bend in your back. And this expansion of the chest, just making more room for the breath. Filling up and letting go. Let your breath fill every nook and cranny of the front part of your body now. The legs are totally relaxed. Feet can sway out to the sides. Settle and notice, just focus on different parts of your body that might be resisting this relaxation. It's so good for you because maybe you've just gotten into the habit of being stressed or tense. So we have to retrain our bodies, our minds. So even by relaxing just one part of the body, it can send a signal to the rest of the group. Hey man, time to chill out. A couple more breaths here, nice big deep inhalation. Long, full, complete exhalation. Nice. Beautiful. Feel your vibe. When you're ready, just bend one knee, roll off to the side, and remove your pillows. Keep them handy, keep them close, keep your blanket close. And we'll come all the way down to our backs. And let yourself settle down onto your mat. And just take a moment to notice. See if there's anything else that needs to be stretched. We're going to come into a pose we usually call happy baby, but I'm going to call it happy bear because I can. So you're going to bend your knees, reach for the outsides of your feet or your pant leg. 
then just tag those knees into your uh, towards your armpits, your shoulders. And take a nice big breath. And if you're feeling like a really happy bear today, just rock from side to side. Now, this is a story changer if there ever was one, right? It just makes you want to smile. Imagine a little bear cub. Roly poly bear cub. And then find stillness here. As you're ready, hug your knees into your chest. And we're going to take our right hand in gently. And if you have your pillows close by, it could be a soft place for your knees to land. We're going to gently guide our knees over to one side, whichever side you choose. And if you land on your pillows, that's really nice. You can leave that right hand or put the hand on, on top of that outer thigh and turn your gaze toward the opposite arm. Breathe. So many noises. Some make us smile, right? One more breath in. And just exhale yourself back through center. Give yourself a nice squeeze. And then guide them over to the other side. If you want to take your pillow, it feels so nice and yummy. Let that other arm open up. Turn your gaze toward that other arm. Find your breath. Slow and even. You just notice if there's anywhere you're resisting. Maybe encourage the jaw to soften, the eyes to close. Maybe that'll help the others, <laughs> the others. One big body, right? With lots of different parts, that's who we are. Nice big deep breath. Exhale completely. And then as you're ready, Come back to center. Take any other movements you'd like to take. And um, I suggest you pile your pillows up and come back to where we started because it's really yummy. And maybe cover up with your blanket. Make yourself really comfy for this final Shavasana. You've made it through this class. Those of you who say you might not be flexible enough to do yoga. The sun has started to go down. It was a beautiful evening. It's a beautiful time we spent together here. But before we go into our final Shavasana, I'd like to do a little progressive relaxation. This is super um, good for us, um, especially if you have a hard time getting to sleep. So just reminding yourself of the contrast of being so tense, so um, stressed as we have been. So when you're ready, I want you to tense every muscle in your body, and that includes your face. So your eyes are closed. No one can see you. Make the funniest face. I'll make it. I'm not proud. So maybe open your mouth wide. You can clench your jaw. Clench your fists. Get your arms really nice and tight. Tense up your legs. Point or flex your toes. Get your belly really tight so that if somebody was coming up to punch you in the belly, not that they would. But they would break their hand. <laughs> Serves them right. Tighten up, tighten up those shoulders. Hold it, 
Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And then just let it go with a big old sigh. Good. One more time, one more time, because we can. Just tense up everything in your body. Face, shoulders, your hands, your fists. And with a big exhale through your mouth, let it go. Beautiful. And now your only job is to close your eyes. Let go of any control of your breath. The thoughts that might come through your mind, acknowledge that they will be there. Just let them float in and float out. And just rest. Softening the face and the jaw. Relaxing deeper and deeper, sinking into the mat. Fully supported. Feeling loved. And with a poem by Mary Oliver that seemed sort of appropriate. Somewhere a black bear has just risen from sleep and is staring down the mountain. All night in the brisk and shallow restlessness of early spring. I think of her, her four black fists flicking the gravel, her tongue like a red fire touching the grass the cold water. There's only one question, how to love this world. I think of her rising like a black and leafy ledge to sharpen her claws against the silence of the trees. Whatever else my life is with its poems and its music and its glass cities, it is also this dazzling darkness coming down the mountain, breathing and tasting. All day I think of her, her white teeth, her wordlessness, her perfect love. You're welcome to stay. If you're close to your bed, snuggle down and just go to sleep. Or if you're ready, begin to deepen the breath. Wiggle fingers and toes. Maybe turning head from side to side. Just gently bringing your body back to this sense of being awake, but deeply relaxed. And as you're ready, roll over to one side, just curl up in that fetal position. Also a nice place to stay, another good place to reset. Good place to help us change our story. And if you're ready to press yourself up, come up to a comfortable seat. 
And those of us who are here, you can tuck something under your hips and sit up nice and tall. Take a big breath in, close your eyes. Exhale through your mouth. Another release, take another breath in. Sigh it out your mouth. And this last time, inhale, completely reach your arms up as though you're reaching for all the goodness, all the love, and draw it right down into your own heart and take a moment to bow your head to your own divinity, your own sacred self, your body, your mind, and your spirit. Find some gratitude for this life, this evening, this group, and of course, YouTube. Thank you guys for coming along with me on this yoga journey, my first YouTube. I'll try to come back on Tuesday nights um, as long as we're here. I hope you have a really sweet sleep and a beautiful night. And the goodness in me, the divinity in me, the love in me sees and recognizes and honors all that is in you. Namaste. Thanks, you guys. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Oh, yay, Betsy was here. Hi, Betsy. Yay, Nancy made it. I'm so glad. Yay. Sorry, I had the wrong link. I'll get it right one day. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm going to sign off. Have a beautiful night.